What is up, my body weight warriors, and welcome back to another video. We've got the coffee, we're back to the usual vlogs, and today we're gonna to be doing a pretty traditional back to the old school training vlog. I did post a video this week on a body weight only lower body workout, and I did mention in that video if you want to build mass or if you want optimal leg development, then I would recommend weighted training. So that's what we're kind of gonna to do today. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are aware that I do use weighted leg training when it comes to lower body movements. It's just kind of better. And whilst I love body weight training, I do think it's optimal for upper body movements because upper body favors complexity. But with the lower body, the lower body favors intensity. You can do squats, you can do deadlifts, and you can do it over and over again, and you can see pretty linear progress. But when it comes to upper body, you need more variation, you need to use different things to keep the stimulus moving and keep progression going. So whilst I have lots of more complex upper body goals, like one arm handstand, the straddle planche, etc., my lower body goals are more like, I wanna hit a 200 kg deadlift and I want to hit like 1.5 times body weight squat, which for me would be about 145 kilos. I wanna basically lift heavy stuff, but I also wanna remain mobile at the same time, but that's kind of, that's a whole nother topic. So although it is a lower body session today, it does not mean we're just doing lower body. Pretty much every time I step in the gym these days, I'm doing some form of handstand session. So there is gonna be some handstand stuff beforehand. I had about three or four days off over the weekend because it was the end of a cycle. I've just started a new one yesterday and I had like a 93 out of 100 on my aura ring. So I was like feeling pumped, ready to smash it. Went a bit harder than I intended to in the session. So I'm paying for its day. Again, it doesn't seem to really correlate. Like I can feel like shit and have some of the best handstand sessions ever and then I can feel absolutely epic and be terrible at handstands. I, they don't really make any sense. So like the good old training vlogs, the full workout of today's video will be in the description down below. This workout isn't actually designed by me. As I've mentioned previously, I've been coached by Emmett now for the past few months, just because it's always nice to have a, another opinion and an outside view on things that you're doing. So this workout is by him and he's decided to let me share it with you, which is cool of him. Next on the agenda is to pick up some orange juice because I don't know why, it just seems to be the best thing post-workout at the moment, I'm literally addicted. And then we we'll head to the gym and hit some legs. Should be fun. One thing I forgot to actually mention before we get into the workout is, is there anything that you want to see in this vlog series? Is it more workouts? Is it more hands and stuff? More upper body, more lower body, more tips, more diet? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what your opinions and how we can shape this future content. So certainly not your normal workout, but we'll get to the leg stuff later. When I'm sore, especially upper body wise, and I'm having to do hands and sessions, which to be quite honest, I have and have to do because the frequency is so much higher than upper body, and I'm often doing it under fatigue, I find it super helpful just to have some form of like high rep banded warm up to start with. It generally gets most of the soreness away, and then you feel kind of good to be training. So various different movements, pulling, pushing, rotation stuff in the go over just a light resistance band spend 10 minutes and that will get rid of most of the doms i started off the session weirdly enough with some blindfolded handstand hold somebody challenged me on instagram and i was like i've never tried this before so it could be pretty fun it was certainly interesting it was definitely not as hard as i thought it was going to be it was just really strange i think the biggest concern was not wanting to kick anyone in the face i just didn't really want to be done for assault to be honest uh, but after about 10 minutes of play, I sort of got it and I actually did eventually get a pressed handstand with blindfold as well as a tuck, but I forgot to record this one, so enjoy the beautiful Instagram story quality. But it was actually ended up like a pretty decent little play. It's a good, fun thing to do, and if you do give it a go, then just tag me on Instagram. Um, today's session, mainly focusing around pike and a little bit of tuck work. Pike is, for me, probably the biggest challenge at the moment. I feel tuck's hugely improved. It feels comfortable, it feels good. Pike still isn't happening. It actually feels like there's quite a limitation in my hamstrings and just general compression strength. With all my focus on like pancake and middle splits, I haven't done that much pike stuff. So I think over the next block, I'm gonna be doing some more pike, trying to open that up. 
and hopefully that'll transfer over to seven, but it's, it's feeling close. It's definitely my shoulders have felt the best they've ever done. Flagging is also another weakness for me and probably one of the things I'm focusing on most. My left side is actually pretty okay, my, my bad side. My right side is definitely worse. You can see here the difference. There's much more lateral shift of the hips. So, so the hips are moving over to the side, but they're not necessarily tilting, which means that it just ends up becoming much heavier, much harder to hold and kind of less inefficient. And when it comes to trying to stand on one hand, we want to be as efficient as possible. So this means stacking the shoulders, which they're kind of pretty stacked here. But just the main difference is that on this right side, you can see it more clearly here. I'm just not pulling down of that leg and really flagging. So if anyone is doing what I'm out there, flagging is just an essential thing. So do more flagging, you'll get really good and really strong in that position and then hat stands will be easy. Right, on to the lower body session and it is pretty much exclusively weighted. I do my flexibility stuff in a separate workout simply because my legs are toast after this session. Um, starting off with Romanian deadlifts. They do have a flexibility component to them. They aren't gonna help lengthen your hamstrings, but nothing crazy extremely uh, lengthened depending on how you do them. Currently I'm focusing more on doing a little bit more weight and not the biggest range of motion. Full stop. Highly recommend them if you want to develop both hamstring strength and flexibility. They complement body weight training very, very well. So after this 10 to 12 reps, it was pretty much superset, about 20, 30 seconds of rest, but for some sled pulls. Now I don't have a sled at my gym. We're kind of making the best of what we have at this commercial gym. The sled pulls are done with the knees bent as close to about 90 degrees as you can. So essentially we're doing lots of continual single leg leg extensions over the period of about 25 meters in total. It's actually brutal. It gets you a very, very nice quad pump, but your legs are jelly by the end of it. The main reason this is being done is essentially just for work capacity. I haven't done weighted leg stuff really for, except for the past six weeks. So just getting back into it, I'm trying to build up my work capacity and how much I can do so then I can lift more and do more. This was the start of the session. And then I actually went into some weighted leg stuff. So my legs were pretty jelly-like and toast at this point. Hence the reason I'm only doing about 40 kilos for these one and one quarter squats. And ignore the, the weird things around my ankles, we'll get to that one in a sec. Um, the one on one quarter squat is basically used to accumulate more time under tension in the bottom of the squat position. So if say you're doing a squat and you find that you fail on a run, one rep max or you feel weak at the bottom of the squat most, doing a one on one quarter squat can really help build some strength and get some more time under tension in that weak position. So that's kind of what I'm using it for just some one on one quarter front squats. I'm going light, the reps are relatively high, but my legs were just fried at this point. This was then superset with some hamstring curls. Ideally, I want a lying leg curl here, but we don't have one again at the gym, so I've kind of had to makeshift one up with some cables, hence the ankle straps. This one is absolutely brutal, but I tell you what, one of the massive things that I've realized when going back into leg training after taking a few years off doing just bodyweight work is how weak my posterior chain and my hamstrings and my lower back is. And that's actually affected my upper body strength for planche and for other things. And since I've been working on strengthening the hamstrings and the lower back, I found those things have also caught up. So if you are doing body weight only, I highly recommend this one. It's Christmas. And we are back now. Session is done, my legs are dead. I have to do that one kind of in the middle of the day when the gym is quiet, because it's kind of equipment intensive, but it's a solid workout. It, it just sucks, to be honest. Post-workout, had half a liter of orange juice, and then I've also got basically some chicken and rice. It's <laughs> literally it. It's uh, chicken and chorizo, which Joe Wick's recipe. It's a, it just tastes really good. Um, I'll link it down below, actually, in case you're interested. A bunch of rice, and then I'm probably gonna have some veggies in a second to make up for it. Aim really for this is just to hit a decent amount of carbs, especially sugary carbs like orange juice and stuff, and some protein post-workout. I kind of try to keep things a little bit more simple, mostly because I'm just hangry. But yeah, I'm gonna tuck into this now, and that's basically the end of today's vlog. If you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you have any comments about future content, like I mentioned earlier, what sort of training you wanna see, upper body, lower body, handstands, what you want me to talk more about, just let me know. If this content is like, what are you guys interested in? I'm happy just to share, that's what I enjoy doing, trying to help you guys out. Whilst you're down in the comment section, you can also just tap that subscribe button and join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe if you don't want to miss out on any more future videos. But that's been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.